Welcome to the program. My name is Alexander Kerry. Ukraine's contemporary art scene is alive and well, and the Isolatia platform is the better example of this vigor. Since the pro-Russian separatists took over Donetsk, this Eastern Ukraine originally based art platform settled down in Kyiv. Today, the platform unveiled his new project, which mixes art and urbanism in the center of Kyiv. The curator of the project, Katerina Filiuk, tells us more about it. Thank you for joining us in the studio. Hello. Thank you. Uh, first, a uh, question about um, Isolatia. Why, why, why this name? Uh, well, because uh, as, as you said, the institution was uh, found in uh, Donetsk uh, at the former factory of insulation materials, and uh, so it, it borrowed its name from from the from the location, basically. But also, uh, as you probably know, Isolatia has two meanings. Uh, also, it's isolation. Isolated, yeah. Yes. Mm. Uh, so they felt a little bit uh, isolated in in this uh, post-industrial industrial region, there, there was no uh, contemporary art or culture infrastructure in general. They were kind of pioneers. And uh, yeah, at some point, uh, of course, the institution has to relocate to, to Kiev. Uh, about the social, social contract project, we're going to talk about the social contract project after, but about the project today. Uh, so as I uh, understand, as um, um, like a lot of, of plants around the sta uh, uh, an old pedestal where Lenin uh, used to be. Can you tell us more about this project of today? Yes, so this is the result of the open call that we, international uh, open call that we announced a few months ago and we, we, we invited artists from all over the world to contribute to the uh, topics that we were interested in, and, uh, namely uh, the commemorative objects and uh, commemorative practices in public space. And uh, this is especially important uh, now in Ukraine in the light of the communization law, because we got rid of the uh, Lenins, but uh, we now have all these vacant, spaces. vacant yeah. uh, spaces, exactly. So probably it's time to think uh, what should be done with them and uh, whether they should be replaced by some other figures or just remain empty. So this is, I think, a very important open question, which can actually um, create a situation for a dialogue. And uh, that's why the name of the project is Social Contract, because it's about uh, the capacity of people to, to talk and to find the, the solution or decision that would satisfy uh, mm. all, all stakeholders. Sort of a democratic process yes, absolutely. through art. Yes, absolutely, yes. Uh, why, why international artists? Why not, why not Ukrainian? Well, uh, because I think it's interesting to see uh, an outsider's per outsider perspective, and uh, nevertheless, we get most of the most of the applications we get are from Ukrainian artists, and of course, they know the situation probably much better than international artists. Uh, they are much more rooted in the context, but somehow, uh, as, as we see, the first one was Mexican, the second one Iranian, and now Mexican again. And uh, it's it's people's choice. In the in the last case, uh, th there was a, the popular vote, and and people se selected Mexican artists, even though there was one Ukrainian uh, fi finalist as well. So, so why is it important to have popular vote? To, to choose to choose those, those artists? Um, I, I have to say that uh, in this case we probably sacrificed a little bit uh, the artistic uh, freedom and uh, of expression because I had this dialogue with uh, with some of the artists and they told me like that they don't feel really comfortable showing uh, sketches not the finalized works, uh, but uh, I think it's important that people, uh, the community, uh, can uh, feel empowered and, and can understand that actually their voices mean something and that they can change uh, uh, the situation and they, they uh, can select something for the public space in the city center that would uh, somehow uh, correspond to, to their... Because it's their, their space too. So, yes, so yes, like absolutely, absolutely. It. So the idea the idea is that, of course, we have various stakeholders like the city council, the community, the artists, um, the politicians, and we try to bring them together. We try to create this dialogue. So if people <coughs> chose the, this project, why do you think people chose a project with plants? 
uh, around, <laughs> around this pedestal? Well, I think it's, uh, first of all, it's a springtime now. And I think it's uh, exactly what the artist uh, refers to, this process of uh, regeneration and, and uh, um, bringing back to life uh, something that was uh, asleep or uh, not that active. And this is the first thing. And I, I think it's a very appealing, uh, very simple idea to try to purify and to, to clean um, this uh, heavily politically charged context and, and, and space, uh, the, the location itself. Uh, yeah, for people to understand, it's like in the center of Kiev in Besaratka Market, and this pedestal used to be Lenin statue, but it also used to be a, a gallow uh, during uh, yes, during the uh, water. Yes, yes. So it's. As you said, fully, yeah, fully yeah, emotionally charged. It's ver yeah. very charged, and and as you probably know, it's there are also many plans to to erect a, a permanent uh, monument there to the heroes of um, anti terrorist operation mm -hmm. or to some uh, national heroes like Taras Shevchenko uh, or even Virgin Mary, which I think is uh, probably too much because we are uh, a secular state, not a religious one. So, um, so yeah, indeed. So the plant is innocuous and it's, uh, it's, yeah, uh, it's a little bit, I mean, <laughs> it's very neutral in a way and uh, also um, Artist, the artist tries to put aside a little bit all these political and social issues and to, to provide uh, this opportunity for people to maybe uh, pause and, and, and meditate and, and think and to see, to, to also reconnect with nature in the city center. It's full of concrete. It's not such a green yeah, area. There's going to be uh, meditation sessions. But it is it is during the Eurovision. How do you, you know? Well, we're we're uh, that was the initial idea of the artist, and uh, we really liked it. Uh, but um, I have my concerns personally because it's a very um, noisy and also polluted uh, area in the city center. And for meditation, I think you need much more contemplative and quiet space. So we'll try to organize some sort of activities. I, I, I don't know if we can, could call it meditation, like, but uh, yes, that would be the last day of the, of the project on the May 17th. And also we would like to distribute the plants on the May 17th, but we uh, really wanted to uh, warn everyone and ask everyone not to you take... You can insist if you want yeah, on not, <laughs> not to take the, the plants before that, because uh, they will be for, uh, for distribution, but towards the end of the, at the end of the project, not now. Let's let's uh, try to keep it yeah, beautiful and nice. Yeah, because this project is, yes, is about for, plants also. <laughs> so, for two weeks. Yeah. Also, it's gonna grow because it's this is also the beauty of this project. I think that uh, in two weeks it's supposed to grow at least ten centimeters high. So it it would be much more beautiful uh, in in a while. So let's wait together <laughs> and and then get the the beautiful plants and, and adopt them. <laughs> um, one uh, other question about you said about art and politics, it's a way to pose uh, this art and mixing between art and politics. Uh, what do you, do, would you say that since the revolution, uh, the art is deeply linked, always deeply linked to politics in, in, in Ukraine? Um, I think that Ukrainian art was uh, always pretty political in one way or another. And uh, if, if we talk about the generation of the artists who came uh, in in the 2000s they their appearance was uh, very much linked to the orange revolution uh, so and and they were very active and uh, also uh, balancing a little bit on this verge between activism and art and and being like very political and after Maidan, yes, I think this this tendency remains and maybe even uh, boosts a little bit. Uh, but uh, in general, I would say that Ukrainian art is, is pretty political. And um, about like hi history, um, this is it a way to 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 sorry again we're gonna cut it in the montage anyways it's fine um, yeah so for the social 
uh, for the social contract projects, what's what's next? What's the other? What's the next uh, projects around this? Yeah, well, so we started uh, with an exhibition and uh, a public program last summer, and then the first uh, temporary installation followed. Uh, the second one was uh, in autumn. This is the third one, and we're planning the fourth and the last uh, this uh, autumn. And again, we don't know what it's going to be because it's again the open call and um, whoever wins would occupy the space for two weeks. Uh, but after that, I, I think it makes sense to uh, try to theorize a little bit and to make maybe to, to draw some con to some conclusions. Uh, so teaming up uh, with the um, Center of, for Uber, Urban Studies at the Kiev Mohila Academy, uh, we decided to organize a, a conference and a series of uh, uh, screenings, uh, artist talks. To put more, uh, more theory, more, more basic. Yes, basic be because I think now we have uh, a lot of practical material and uh, also we had some surveys during the previous installations. We really tried to ask people what do they think and how do they react to the installation. So now probably it's time to process all this information and, and try to uh, somehow uh, use it as a... Yes, yes, because I think it's important to also to have uh, some um, academic, uh, yeah, semi-academic discourse around these uh, topics. Thank you very much for this interview. It was a pleasure to have you in the studio. Uh, that was Katerina Filiuk, curator for the Social Contract Project. Thank you for watching the program. Stay tuned for the rest. Yeah.